Take a look at these pictures. You would consider these elements of art, right? Now take a look at these other pictures. Are these still considered art? If the answer is yes to both of them, then why is that the more widely held belief is that the answer is no? Well, you see, video games are becoming more and more impactful throughout our popular culture and within our schools. Yet, the commonly held belief is that video games will never progress further than simply being petty forms of entertainment. As science and technology has progressed throughout history, the number of mediums that are accepted as being forms of art has steadily increased. But will video games become the next medium that will be historically respected as art? Similar to how novels and movies have become respected by the artistic community. Art is defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. But for our purposes, this is too easy to argue that video games are art, as due to this vague definition that giraffe you drew in kindergarten is technically art. For this reason, we have decided to use the term high art, such as will video games become respected by the high class and intellectually empowered individuals. As an example, many paintings are nowadays analyzed as having deeper meaning than initially apparent, or some pieces are highly regarded for using a radical technique to a fantastic effect. So now our question is, should video games be regarded to the same extent? So where to begin better? then with asking how video games are publicly respected in today's society. Some average players believe that games are art because they feel that just about anything can be considered art. Do you think that video games are considered in like a legitimate art form? Yes, I do. I think that almost anything can be considered an art form as long as it expresses an opinion about something. The average player believes that video games are a legitimate form of art, considering the various processes that the game needs to go through in order to become a completed ended product. Now, would you consider video games a legitimate art form? Yes. Okay, why do you feel that way? Well, they're made with graphic art design, and it's really complicated to make video games, considering all the code and all the graphics and green screens that people recreate, especially with cutscenes and all that stuff. And it, I mean, it's, a, it's, mo it's moving pictures and moving animations that look real, so I consider that art to myself. Do you feel that video games would be considered high art? For example, like ancient art, like the Mona Lisa, or some kind of like statue or portrait that was painted year years or hundreds of years ago is examined by the upper class, but do you think video games would ever reach that? No, but it's going to be one of those things that are going to be worth a lot of money, but it won't be considered uh, like in the same class as like a statue or like the Statue of Liberty or something like that, where people will look up to it and then will continue to look up to it for however long it stands. These same gamers also believe that video games will not reach the standard of high art, or at least no time soon. However, they do also believe that it, they will be worth a lot of money in the future, and will also be worth investing in for other companies. But when we began to question a professional in the art fields, we received a more intriguing opinion on the matter. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Mr. Roll, a ceramics professor here at King High School. I've taught ceramics for four years. Would you consider video games as a form of art? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's creative expression. It's uh, just like, for instance, movie making, I believe, is an art as well. And when you're creating these video games, it's almost like a movie where you get to choose the story and where it's going. So, absolutely. Do you think in the years to come, video games will be looked back as a sort of thing, like famous pieces of art and famous sculpt famous uh, buildings and sculptures? No. Sort of in a sense of high art? No, I, pr I don't think they will gain that. Um, I think they will be looked at it on their own platform. I think they'll, they will be valued as highly as art. But I, I don't think they're going to be looked at on the same plane. It may change. It'll be a, it'll be a while before that hits. And I, I you know, the way art is looked at changes over time too. The intent for making uh, video games and things like that, the initial intent is to make money. Art, the initial intent is to make art. Now some people make art to make money, but the reality is that's. It's a very small manner of people. Most people make the art because, because most art does not sell at high value 
early. It takes time. Then, according to movie critic Roger Ebert, video games never have and never will be art, but we respectfully disagree. Similar things have been said about movies and novels in the past, but now they are respected to an extent never thought possible. For example, movies now have their own award ceremonies that focus on a range of aspects, from storytelling, to music, to actors' performances. Movies adapted over time into a medium that could easily be used to create art, but it took time to reach that point. Similarly, if video games cannot be considered art now, there will be a point where someone figures out how to develop games differently enough to earn their claim of becoming high art. So, what is it that makes video games so different that they cannot be called art? Well, Roger Ebert once again attributes this to the fact that video games have a definite winner or loser. But since the mid-2000s, this conception is no longer applicable. Almost every successful game available now has multiple possible outcomes or a wide variety of results that can be attained based on the decisions that you make throughout the game. A perfect example of this is the crowdfunded game Undertale. This simple game made by Toby Fox over 2.7 years after his fundraising campaign received 1,022% of the requested $5,000 in fundraising within 30 days. Toby's promise was to make a game different from all other games within the genre. His simple concept was to create a game that rather than traditionally separating the story and gameplay aspects, to merge the two so that each would affect the other. To further separate this game from the norm, the game was built around the idea that every enemy you came across could be spared, allowing you to progress through the entire game without having to kill any of the game's dozens of simple yet lovable characters. Due to this radically different system, the game has four distinct endings, and a still unknown number of possible variations of these endings ever since the game's release in September of 2015. The result was a game that received critical acclaim from absolutely every video game critic and or critic group inside and outside the industry. At its worst, the game received a 9 out of 10 rating, and in doing so, provided the industry with, and I quote, one of the most progressive and innovative RPGs to come in a long time. As said by GameSpot's own Tyler Hicks. As evidenced by Undertale, successful video games revolve mostly around a concept that most art mediums can only dream of being able to use. The element of choice. Sure, there are some pieces of art that use viewer interaction to their benefit, but video games base their entire focus around allowing the player to choose what they do. This results in no two games and no two play sessions ever being the same. For example, while Minecraft's blocky landscape seems simplistic, anything can be created within the game with a little imagination and dedication of time. This allows the player to turn the game's own landscape into anything they wish, giving the player the power to determine what the game world ultimately turns into. Admittedly, there are many games where choice is completely limited to over die, or which gun do I use to obliterate the next zombie? But just like movies and accepted art medium, there will always be games meant to just be mindless entertainment. But just because there is a bad or mentally unstimulating game that is popular, this does not mean that the entire video game industry is limited to mindless fun. This is exactly the same in the film industry. There can be a bad movie that is popular, but there is still the potential for a good film that challenges viewers with ideas that break the mold. The question now is, have video games had this renaissance game that breaks common video game conceptions enough to be considered a masterpiece of the genre publicly? Now, you could argue that this game already exists, or you could argue that a game of this intellectual impact has yet to be created. Either way, we ask others to at least respect that video games certainly have the potential to be a masterpiece.